Hello, hello, hello everyone, this is me, Mr. Ethereum, and my friend, Dr. Smart Contract. And this is our irregular part of the show Crypto Not For Dummies. We liked your past comments, so we decided to do this again. So since you've liked our previous episodes, we've decided to talk a bit more about Layer 2 solutions. Well, let's get going. Roll the intro. users to conduct transactions directly with each other without writing information to the public blockchain. How does this technology work from a technical point of view? Oh, good question, huh? Back to basics. Let's start from the beginning. Layer 2 allows it. There is a hint to lightning networking here, I guess. Well, maybe. Yes. We talked about the Ethereum transaction that allows thousands of people to use Layer 2 solution. And there is an old technology on which only Bitcoin can work. This is a Layer 2 solution called Lightning Network. Its essence is that there are two participants, and they create a channel between themselves, through which they very quickly make transactions between each other. But how does this happen? The first participant and the second participant freeze some amount together on the Bitcoin blockchain. Let's imagine a line here. Here we have Layer 1, which is actually Bitcoin. And here we have Layer 2, an add-on over it. We transfer money here below, and we record all actions here at the top. In order to transfer it using Lightning Network, we freeze the funds here. Go here, here we establish a channel with the second user directly, and log in the transaction that we are transferring the asset to him. There is a mutual transaction between the two participants. I can give you the money, and you see that I gave you the money. Now you owe me a certain amount, and I owe you a certain amount. Then you sent me the money, and we log in new information. Yes. It accumulates here, and at one point we execute all these transactions here. Not execute, but simply display it on the network if we want to close the channel. Assets move on the first blockchain level wherever they need to. A lightning network is called a network because there is a channel between two participants. There is also another channel between the other two participants, and this allows us to send money through one intermediary. There can be a different number of these participants. Money can be sent between all of them. Roughly speaking, if I have a channel with Johnny, and you have a channel with Johnny too, I can send money to you, and you give it to Johnny. We will write this down, and when we transfer the final amount from the second level to the first, I, not you, will give Johnny the debt. This is how it works. What are the disadvantages of the Lightning Network? There are a few I would say. First, every participant of a peer-to-peer -peer lightning system must always be online and save his previous states. Because if he goes offline for a week, another participant can send the old state where he owns all the money in the channel they posted. And so he will take all the funds himself, although in fact they are 50 to 50. Yes, Leia will believe him, and there will be no one who says otherwise. Usually, when funds are withdrawn from the lightning channel, both participants sign this withdrawal. If one participant leaves, the second can withdraw funds alone, but for this he needs to wait a certain time for the second participant. If the first one is cheating, he can punish him and take all the money for himself. This is a cat and mouse game in which you have to consider everything. There is a second disadvantage. Mr. Etherman and I are creating a channel between each other. Mr. Etherman put 5 Bitcoin on this channel, while I keep 0 Bitcoin. For a certain time, he sent me all 5 Bitcoin, and so he had 0 Bitcoin left on his account. Now he cannot send me Bitcoin. He needs to deposit some funds into my account again. This can be done in different ways, which we are not discussing now, but this is a big problem. Because each time you need to reopen the channel or create a transaction on the main chain. In addition, for example, he has sent me 5 Bitcoin, and I owe 5 Bitcoin to someone else. Now I need to somehow withdraw these 5 Bitcoin, and then transfer them to another channel with another on-chain transaction. It is too complicated. On-chain transactions are transactions at the first level. Yes. On-chain is transactions at the first level, but those who do not know this do not watch us. In general, these are the main problems. Therefore, it seems to me that most of the people who use this, I mean, exchanges or some organizations that have a large number of mutual settlements with each other, it is very expensive for a daily user to pay for their Starbucks like this. You need about $90 to open a lightning channel between two users. Therefore, this is not suitable for mass adoption, but this is the good way to reduce the cost of the current system. This is the solution for multiple participants, but consider the current Bitcoin channel capacity. 
To make a lightning channel for every person in this world, and there are 8 billion of us, it will take about 8 years for Bitcoin. I don't remember exactly how long it will take. This is unsatisfactory in fact. You need to understand, if we want mass adoption, we won't be able to make it without layer 2. If you want to pay with Bitcoin in a store, you must understand that you will pay on layer 2 first, and only then these funds will be transferred. You need to understand that the current financial system is arranged in approximately the same way. You come to Starbucks and pay by card, and money is not debited from your account immediately. It is frozen by the bank on your account, and a vendor makes some kind of record about such a transaction. But the money is transferred to the vendor over a period of time. Therefore, Layer 2 is an integral part of mass adoption. It is necessary. There is one more problem with Layer 2, specifically the Lightning Network, yes. privacy, and centralization. Yes. You need to create a route to send money to someone who doesn't have a channel. There is a danger that many users will start making Layer 2 connections with some bank. This bank will have too many channels with other users and banks, and due to this it will control payments between users. It is not good. It will know everything about every transaction you send. It will know who works with it in general. This is a solution in the current situation, but this solution is not suitable for mass adoption. And it has obvious problems such as centralization and lack of anonymity. A need to really raise scalability. And of course we rely on scalability. We all need much more scalable layer 2 solutions. Bitcoin team, we appeal to you. Please resolve this issue. We are not satisfied that the nodes are weak. There are so many transactions. This was the 17th episode of our show Crypto for Dummies. Not for dummies. Not for dummies. Hit the bell button. Yes, leave your comments whether you enjoy the show and which other topics you would like us to talk about. And what do you think about Layer 2 and its prospects? Do you use Layer 2? Let us know.